knock them off individually. And so to change your sweeper brush, the first thing you want to do is bring it up to a fairly level surface. Okay. Okay, you want to, of course, turn the engine off, put the emergency brake on, lower the brush down to sitting on the, on the surface. So the brush is on the surface, Scott. Yes, sir. We used a, a three-quarter wrench. Okay. And there should be three bolts that you can unscrew on the idle end of the brush frame. Okay. That's, that's the, there's a plate that the idle bearing is attached to, and that plate is what you have to remove from the end of the machine. Okay. Okay, there is a, another bolt that attaches the hood to that plate that should be a 3 8 bolt requiring a 9 16 wrench. 10 4? Probably use two wrenches because the nut's gonna try to spin. If you can use an impact wrench and sockets, it'll make the job a lot faster. Re re relieve those bigger bolts, which are half inch bolt requiring three quarter wrench or socket. Relieve the small bolt. That end plate should come right off the end of the core. Okay. Okay, crank the machine up, raise the brush frame slightly. Okay. When you slightly, are we talking? The, well, 15 the, degrees? Probably, probably about three to four inches. Okay. And the reason you don't raise it all the way is because you now have the idle end of the brush disconnected from the brush frame and the drive end of the brush still connected to the brush frame. Okay. Okay, at that position, you should be able to physically pull the complete brush assembly towards you and relieve it from the drive motor. There's a square, about a two and a half inch square drive mechanism on the motor that fits into a square female mechanism within the brush frame, or excuse me, you know, the brush center core mechanism. So once that happens, <coughs> Just roll the brush out of the way. Okay. Uh, clear the machine. When you Ta say clear the machine, what do you mean? Just, just so you can be able to move it and not bump against the machine and you know have the machine in your physical way. 10-4. Uh, there's an end plate. A lot of times there's two of them. There could be one or two on the end of the brush frame. It's usually held in place uh, with a. Uh, and I'll just say a uh, half inch bolt is probably requiring that same three quarter wrench. Okay. Okay, that end plate has to come off. The bearing mechanism that is considered the idle bearing is held in place with two set screws. Yes, sir. Okay, loosen those set screws, clean the shaft off. Make sure it hasn't been hit with a hammer, it's not filled up with rust and what have you. Clean the shaft off with a wire brush and sandpaper. Okay. And spray some blaster, WD-40, a similar like lubricant on it. And take a, we used a dead blow style hammer. Okay. Uh, which is a, uh, a plastic style hammer filled with shot to give it its weight. And we took and tapped the plate that had the idle bearing attached to it off of that shaft okay okay and at this time it might be easier to remove the plate on the end of the core physically holding these wafers in place at that time with the bearing removed uh, the plate removed these brush wafers should come off the core okay and a lot of times you can tell if they're stuck or not, you might physically knock one of them off at the time. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times you can take and get it started and maybe go through and, and with that hammer and tap them and loosen them up. And a lot of times you can take that core and let somebody straddle it with the same as we did here and physically hold it in place and then another party pulls the core out of it okay 
if it's loose enough, that's the fastest way to do it. All right. Then take the core and stand it on its end, which would be the end that the motor hooks to. It should be a flat surface there because that plate wasn't removed. Correct. And then when you stack these brushes on there, they have to be turned such that the lug here, there's three support uh, tubular pieces of structure on the core. Okay. So you want to put this on one of those tubings. When the next one goes on, you want to rotate it to the next tubing. When the next one goes on, rotate it to the next tubing. So you're just constantly going around it. Okay. And what happens, if, if you do that properly, the, the bristles will be separated like such because when they come shipped in the box they come flat and that's why they take up less distance in the box okay so when you put them on you want to rotate them to where they offset and they open up that, okay. uh, that expands them out now so did it, it seems like when this one was put on it was put on wrong well sometimes these things will go on a core that has three uh, support columns in it. And sometimes yes. they go on a core that might have four. So as long as these are separated like this, uh -huh. when they go on, whether they're in line with each other, which in this case you would have to flip, flip it over to do that, okay. or you simply rotate them like this because there's three sections here. You know, this is the section that was furthest away from you, here, here, and here. So there's three sections that are high or low to this wafer, not four. Mm -hmm. If you're doing four, then you would definitely have to rotate it. But because this particular core had three, you could do it this way, providing that when you take it out of the box, you flip it over. Okay. And that's what some people don't do, is they'll get going real fast, and they'll put it together, and all of a sudden they'll get the brush halfway filled, and they'll look at it, and they'll have two or three of them that are put right together like that, and then they get to the end of the brush, and they'll have six inches of space that has no bristles on it, and they can't figure out why until they look at it and see that four or five of these were put together. So it's pretty important when you put it together to be sure that these things are offset to create this cavity here. Okay. Because if you don't, then when you get into the end of the brush, you simply won't have enough bristles to fill it up. Okay. And then when you get that on there, of course, just do things in reverse. You put the end plate on there that holds this in place, and quite commonly, it's normal to have to compress this a small amount. Okay. Probably not more than an inch. You know, a half inch to an inch would probably be good. But you do want the bristles coming completely to the end of the brush core. So when you have the plate removed, or excuse me, uh, reinstalled on here, then the brush is done. Okay. So then you have to just reverse the uh, process of putting the bearing, the plate on and the bearing on and what have you. Now this is the bearing that came off of your machine that we changed the brush on. Okay. You can see the seal is completely wore out. The, the balls are completely gone. This probably would have failed, you know, at any given time and left you kind of broke down in the middle of the job. Okay. So it's important to inspect stuff like this when that broom is changed. Okay. Now, what could have caused that damage? Or that wear, I should say, not damage? Well, it could have been caused by several things. One is a lack of grease. Okay. Two, it could have got string wound up in here that physically ate the seal out, which is probably what happened. So it's very, very important to clean this string out on the idle bearing and the drive motor at a minimum of every broom chain, at a bare minimum, because this is relatively cheap to replace yes the brush motor is not what would you recommend how often would you recommend inspecting that every day every day every day okay because what happens is he gets 20 feet of string wrapped in today he cleans it out today tomorrow is good but if he doesn't do that he gets 20 feet of string in today 20 feet tomorrow 20 feet the next day in the week he's got 100 feet of string wound up in here which not only eats the seal out, it puts a lot more hydraulic pressure on the unit. So when the guy's out there sweeping 
And he said, this broom just doesn't have any power any longer. It just stops turning real easy. Well, if he's running at a normal hydraulic pressure of just say a thousand pounds of hydraulic pressure, and he's got so much string wound up in here that this is absorbing 700 pounds. Okay, it's just like trying to force hydraulic oil through two small hydraulic lines. You're creating what they call pressure drop. I refer to it a lot as back pressure. This is no different. You're not putting in the race car world the horsepower to the ground, the horsepower to the wheels. You're putting the horsepower to trying to turn it through this string. Yeah, I understand. You want to put your horsepower to the bristles against the, the surface. Understood. So just reverse the process, make sure everything's tight, and it should be good to go. All right. Well, thank you, sir.